be interviewing the wonderful, beautiful Amanda. Please do introduce yourself. Hi everyone, my name is Amanda and I am a virtual assistant slash online business manager. Currently chatting with Sima from Jamaica. Hey, what? So we've come back on the, the virtual interviewing because, you know, Amanda's not with us, well, she's not with me in the flesh down in breezy England. Today's a breezy day, so I'm not out today. <laughs> but um, yeah, Amanda's a long time friend and we did see some amazing things 2020. So it was a must that I got Amanda to come on Come Chat with Sima to share her 2020 story because basically this is when it birthed isn't it mm -hmm. it's definitely mm -hmm. so, yeah. so can you tell uh the people who you are what you do please so yeah as i said before i'm amanda i'm a virtual assistant online business manager um, and basically a virtual assistant is a bit like having a personal assistant but virtually so I don't sit next to you I don't work next to you I don't have a desk next to you everything is done virtually and an online business manager is more the project management side of business so going into your business and helping you scale helping you outsource implement systems automations that then um, yeah allow you to scale your business and focus on what your make you more money okay that's right that's dope. So, the reason why I said this only started 2020 is because I want you to tell the people the story of how this started. What happened to you, Amanda? What happened to me? So, basically, I came to Jamaica at the beginning of March for a two week holiday and for my cousin's wedding. Had the wedding, which was really good, um, and then had a two week holiday driving to Jamaica. Like I was going to make it, we made it like a, um, a driving holiday, like driving to different parishes, stopping at different hotels. It was going really good. And then COVID hit towards the later half of my holiday. And on the day that we was meant to go home, I woke up and I was like, something don't feel right. So got to the airport and I think I'd sort of made my mind up that I wasn't coming home. My parents live here. I just got some content. So um, I thought, no, let me still go to the airport. And we flew by the US and um, we couldn't make it home because the US had stopped anyone entering the country. So our, <laughs> our visas had been revoked. <laughs> and um, we were like, what? But we're British. Um, like that made any difference. <laughs> like, oh, you mean me now? No visa. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, we couldn't. Uh, we couldn't enter um, by the US, and I think it was about two thousand pounds to get a direct flight. What? Like, no, do you know so what? I'm good. They, do you know what? I'm not gonna lie. They did, but it wasn't in layman's terms. And you know when you go around all these parts of the email trying to add every word, word and then you're going on the website, and I'm like, no, I'm sure it's not saying that. Like it must just be for people. It was just like this can't apply to me right now. Mm. So yeah, it wasn't until we got to the to the airport, and they were just like, you can't get part of the PM. <laughs> Basically. Wow. So, um, yeah, it was like £2,000 for a ticket home. And I just had to evaluate it. I was like, I'm here with my family. I'm going to come back to London to sit in a flat and be by myself, as it were, because everyone had to isolate. Right, I was just about to say, at that point, was we already isolating here? No, it was beginning to isolate. Like, going right. to start isolating. Didn't know what was going to happen. And it just felt like... It felt like the end of the world. The end of the world. It was beginning to feel like the end of the world. And I was um I was just like, suppose I can't fly out and see my family. And then at the time my great grandma wasn't doing too well and I said, if anything happens, I can't come. And so I just made my mind up that I'm not gonna come back. And, and you know what, it was a blessing because then I drove up from the bay to Kingston 
my friend managed to get a flight because she wanted to go home, so she paid for her dad. Like, I zipped up and was like, I'm getting you on that British Airways flight. I got her on the flight. Um, and it's a good thing that I did stay because sadly my um, great grandma passed away like five days after, um, which I kind of knew was going to happen. Like something told me. So that was another reason for me staying. So you're in Jamaica. You now decided that you're staying. You've even experienced a loss in the family. We don't know. I don't know how your thoughts were about COVID, but in the beginning, I was like, what is this? What is going on though? Like, let's do some research ourselves. You get what I'm saying? Like, because I'm confused, you know. And then yeah, most to definitely. To, it was. It was, to the mm -hmm. it was like, I don't even know if I want to be out there with these people because they were like moving like zombies. Do you know what I mean? Like, crossing the road, like, I've got COVID written on my forehead. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> So it's like, you know, I don't know, was it, how was it like that? How was it for you in Jamaica in the beginning, going back to March? So in the beginning, back in March, when we first realised that there was COVID on the island, I was pretty scared to go out because I didn't want people to hear my accent. So they would think that I had brought the COVID with me, but I was oh. here because COVID came in into the island. So I would either not talk or change my accent or just not go somewhere um especially because i was in country like in parts of kingston people were doing like witch hunt shit <laughs> which, which you're lying <laughs> oh, I can't <laughs> yeah people were hunting hunting people down um especially if they had a british accent because it no was way. Like, as in the uk that initially brought covid to jamaica so let me ask you a question but it was a returning <laughs> resident if if they found you and you had COVID, what would happen? They were killing people. Your joke. It was, I don't know how true that was. I didn't hear I don't, that I don't, one. I don't know how true it was, but I remember I was in St. Elizabeth and I had my mum calling me in a panic, like, oh dear, I can't get through to you. And I was like, I was on a tour reserve, like on a, <laughs> on a trip. <laughs> there, yeah. ain't no, there ain't no Wi-Fi in the middle of the sea. So... I'm fine, what's happening? You know, she said, I'm going to go and I'm going to shoot people. And, but I think it was just scam. I was going to say, I didn't hear that. These times there, I'm, I'm wishing that I was in Jamaica with you. You know that way it's there. And you're telling me about this now. What? Yeah, no, at yeah. first, at first it was hard because they were just, you know, people just ignorant. So you wouldn't want to speak too tough or open my mouth because... It's like, if anything, when it first comes, like, oh, no, don't talk to them. Don't, you know, because they've got COVID. And mm. Yeah. Um, the, I mean, over here, they implemented things really quickly. So even still, you can't go to any shop without your mask. You have to have, as soon as you enter the store, you have hand sanitizer and they take your temperature. They've been doing that since March. So I know the UK is just implementing things, but Jamaica are around the shore. They were doing that since from March, March, you know, taking your temperature. What sort yep. of shop? The supermarket. Any shop, supermarket, anywhere you got supermarket, what? food. If you want, got island grill. Like there was a time when we were all in lockdown, so all the shops were closed. Um, some days lockdown was from like three p.m. and at first the streets were dead. I've never seen it like that. Like the streets were dead. Everyone lock up in the little room. Like dead, dead, dead. Yeah, Not but happening. you know what it is, though, as well. In, in the Caribbean, a lot well, what, from what I saw with videos in Jamaica, a lot of people were fair, fearful, weren't they? Over yeah. here, yeah. so no one ain't like, scared, you know? so easy people... to scaremonger over here. So easy, and no one ain't doing their own research. I don't watch mm. the news, I don't read newspapers. My mum's the one that always like, and I'm like, don't tell me, I don't want to know. The news um, says. That tonight at 8 p.m. we are going in. You know what I mean? <laughs> so basically, that's what, yeah. like, it's crazy. So you're going to be like, what? Never forget, ready to, you know what I'm saying? For this yeah, time. I was just like, I don't, I don't want to know. We still, we still have a curfew now at 11. But if I'm honest, we were still going out during COVID. There were certain bars, like literally, if it was the same six people, you'd always be the same six people. 
and um, they've set their bars open. There was things still, you know, Jamaica. No one ain't gonna lock up, lock up money mm. for me. But, but then that still um, took time, though. Uh, kind of no. Like what, things so from the beginning, people were still yeah undercover. Yeah, because okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was still out. Like, I can't be in my house seven days a week, lock up 20 yeah. hours. I committed no crime. So, yeah. That, so, that might you, still to, you know, like, what if you wanted to go to the beach and go for a swim? Right? So, beaches were closed. Yeah, beaches were closed. But you could go to, like, that's what I mean. We'd go to our friend's house that has a pool. And right, we'd ski right. around that. Like, otherwise, it's. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna tump down people in the house. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm used to living by myself. <laughs> yeah. So, oh my gosh, even that. So. Or they want to tump down me. I don't know. <laughs> being, being back home with mum and that family and everything, how how has that been? Hard. No, not really. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just in case you were like, this. yes. Um, oh no! You know when you're, when you're at home, you don't have that, you know. Yeah, I don't really, uh, it's a weird one. It's the first time in, what, six, seven years? Like, mm. other than, I think the longest period has been two or three weeks. So, um, definitely missing my own space, my own sanctuary. And remember, when my mum left, I was young still. Like, even though I was in my 20s, it's a young 20, you're mm. grown. Being in my 30s now, I'm fully fledged growing my own woman. So I live a certain way and a certain lifestyle. So it's implementing that as well in my environment, um, yeah. which is very different to my mom, my brother. I live with my, my grandma as well. So um, who has dementia, like Alzheimer's. So um, it's, I mean, she's active and she's often and whatever, but it's, it's funny. Like she does, you find things. It's, <laughs> Let me give you like so it was mango season and when I tell you something, yeah. I find mango everywhere in the drawer, the cutlery drawer everywhere. Yes, see, because she just put mango everywhere, <laughs> literally everywhere. The fridge, a <laughs> cup of mango. You go in the cereal box, there's a mango. <laughs> Jeez. You know how much mango is here, bro? That was But she, yeah, no, like, like you're just, just living with Granny and she does different things. Like you'll open the fridge and there'll just be something from the fridge there. Doesn't belong in there. And you're like, okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's getting used to getting used to that. Um, yeah. So your mango. It's all right. I'm independent. I still go yeah. out. I, still drive. I drive everywhere. I'm up and down. I have my friends. I have my cousins. I, you know, I'm still doing. It's like I live here anyway. I'm still supermarket massages, beauty parlor. Like I'm still doing my stuff. Still living your life. Mm-hmm. So. My life don't stop. So let's go into why we did Carlyo to come chat with me. My pat was terrible, you know. I've been really. What are you calling for, it. Sima? What are you calling for? What are you really calling <laughs> for? I've been working on my pat bar. I went to Jamaica late last year and I've got videos there because you know me, I'm just, I film everything here. So I've got videos, I'm talking to these guys. They've, we're, we're on an excursion and I'm like, how's my pat bar? And he's like, <laughs> And he's like, it's, it's all right, still, it's all right. These times people think, girl, go back to foreign, you know what I mean? Like, or whatever they say. I don't even, I say, you know, I'm just terrible. And the thing is, is that in my, fir- I'm 31 in a minute, guys. And in my 31, yeah, my mum, yeah, my mother, fully speaks strong patwa. Like, she's just stepped off the plane today. And I am just here. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's always hey, the way, though. Always I'm, I'm the just way. here, your Lucian girl. Yeah. Giving it to that. You know what I mean? But yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I need right. to spend the six months out in Jamaica and I can come back. Yeah, but and... I still haven't got it. I've been there for like six months. Yeah, but there. when you put the patwa on, it's all right. It sounds decent. It sounds <laughs> fiery. Okay, so Amanda, how did your business start? What happened? How did it take off? Tell me, tell me people then. Let me tell you. Um, and so basically, I'd always wanted to start my own VA agency, so my own virtual assistant company. And the initial process was probably from about two years ago. I got a logo made, I started a website, then I started. Kind of so this website that you've got now, it's mm. been there for two years? Yeah, it's been there for two years. 
not that exact one, but right, yeah, right. yeah. And um, I, but I just didn't have the self belief. To be honest, I wasn't in a great place mentally. And if you're not in a great place mentally, something like this can't run. It can't run. So I had a lot of work to do on myself. Uh, that's a whole nother episode, but went away, done the work on myself, come back now, and then I'm here. Where did you and go? I, <laughs> I went away, as in, like, I, I take therapy, change oh, jobs. okay. So, wow, so bad relationship. mentally, you took your, your, your soul on yeah, I've got my crown chakra, okay. my mature chakra, like, I'm good, you know? Like, every, every, everything I lined up now, everything. yeah? <laughs> right, cool. That's all. I just wanted to know. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so then, yeah, I was here. And um, so what I was saying before is I work full time. I, I didn't come with no laptop. So I went price smart and I bought a, um, I bought a refurbished laptop, which was like 200 pounds. And I bought it for work, for like my full time work. And but I would get up at three o'clock in the morning, and by eleven I'd finish. And I'm like, what else am I gonna do for the day? Can't just sit on and eat and raid out the fridge. I don't really watch TV. That was, I think, at the time, you know, everyone was watching Netflix. But I was getting bored. I said, mm. well, if I do not start something during this pandemic, I'm top idiot, top top idiot. And that doesn't go across the board for everyone. That's just me for myself. It was like, yeah. you've got this thing that you started and you have no excuses now. None whatsoever. Yeah. Like, it was oh, a so you got yourself aligned. Yeah, you I would have slapped myself. Ah. I would have slapped myself. Like, if I did not do something, me would have slapped myself. I said, I can't be here in big, big Jamaica. You don't have no responsibilities. You have nothing to look for. You can't just sit up. And just I just... Back, back. You would have just come back. I said, eh, eh, I'm going to go and pop it, you know? <laughs> I do you know what as well I have um, always worked since I was like 14 15 years old so yeah. even though I was working in the mornings and still doing my job from abroad like getting up at three which is equivalent to nine o'clock over there or whatever like still doing my job it didn't feel like enough for me and yeah. I was like no I can be doing more and then I don't know if it was because I am back at the place that I feel I have power I'm back at the place that is just so spiritually enhancing for me and very abundant. And the fact that, you know, like my great grandma died, she was 102 and it was like my grandma, my great grandma, my grandma and my mum were all entrepreneurs as well at one point, at any one point in their life. And so it was just like, why wouldn't I? Why would I not? And um, so I opened the website that I'd previously made and I got all these butterflies in my stomach and I was like, oh no. And I shut it. Really? And then I, yeah, I shut it. And I was like, oh, nah. And I think I left it a day or two. And then I was just like, you know, I just cussed myself a little bit. And I was like, get started. And um, I sat myself. It was over the Easter weekend. Yeah. So Good Friday, Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> so by, between Good Friday and the Saturday, I sat myself in a room. I rebuilt my website. And then from scratch, because I didn't like the one that I had. Yeah. And then I found a, like loads of stuff for virtual assistant. I didn't know how to start, where to start. It was the universe, God, someone just showing me different ways. And I just started. And then my birthday was coming up like, two weeks later. And I said, OK, I'm going to put things in place, like have my website, learn a few things that virtual assistants do. And then for my birthday, I'm going to launch, which was so scary like I was just like because so still, so the question how long did it take you to do your website two days two days bro two days yeah two days <laughs> do you know what yeah as you know not a lot of people know but I'm, I'm slowly starting to share it I'm really watching support is love and every time I talk to you there are other women that I talk to as well you just inspire me, you know, like yeah. the thing in my belly, the, and it's a good tingle. Like when you share your story, yeah, it's just that, whew, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, when you're just sitting with winners, like, yeah. like I'm winners so table. proud of you, Amanda, like, Thank oh you. my God. Anyway, sorry, let me let you continue, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, pushed out the website for my birthday and I was literally like, eyes closed. Ooh, 
like that feeling like oh mm. and the response I got was phenomenal absolutely phenomenal this this response the support and people sharing and I was like oh wow okay because to me I'm just a little old me in my corner like um, yeah. and people sharing I think at the time as well I'm that person that I definitely had kind of imposter syndrome and again the self-belief I mean it was there at ground level but it's not where it is now like you can't tell me that I can't do anything because I'm gonna show you like I can do it whereas before I would be like I can do it but no I'm just like yeah I can do that um and so yeah I pushed it out had all the support and then I got my first client she was an American lady online through Instagram and I was like ah, the shit <laughs> and then I was like oh crap I've actually got to do it now I, I've got to do it and um yeah, I don't even remember who was my second client or third client. It just, it took off. I got featured in Forbes in May. Mm-hmm. Um, from that, that took off as well. That was a whole nother like snowball effect. Um, and then after that, I had done Jamaican primetime TV twice. Um, mm-hmm. And I've been booked out. Like I'm booked out since. Um, and my clients are amazing. I work with some amazing clients like let me tell you that I'm not gonna brag and say who they are but they're absolutely amazing um, and I have so many plans as well and I want to implement so like you know so much and I think I just want to show people that you can do anything anything you don't have to be in a certain place you don't if you work for someone you don't have to be where they are you can still work this virtual thing works and um, yeah if you think of something tomorrow and you believe that it's going to work, then why wouldn't it work? Mm, girl. <laughs> girl. You know what I'm saying? Law of attraction, right? Some of that magical powers are gone. As long as you take action. Our ancestors with us. Yeah, we, that's a big you one. Know what I'm you, you are carrying on an ancestral legacy, your great grandma, your granny, your mum, and now mm. you are that entrepreneur, but you have come to up the level. You get me? Like, I'm just not just the, the normal entrepreneur. I'm going to show, or no, say, show you how I get down. Legacy. <laughs> Girl. So, you're doing well, successfully mm. launched, you how long have you been running now? What April, May, June, July, yeah, August, to right. August, yeah. Yeah. This because this, this is coming out August, right? So yeah, five months, but right? mm, four and four and a bit, yeah. So yeah. and you're still in Jamaica, so uh, who up here is? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what are you saying? I said, who's paying your rent? <laughs> oh, I'm still paying my rent. I'm still paying my bills. My cousin's in my house. Um, yeah, I'm still covering what I need to cover. I mean, I make money on top of my money, and um, yeah, it's just it's good. So, 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 all I'm trying to say there, you don't need to even go into too much detail, but you are financially fulfilling. You're financially fulfilled at the moment. You're still cut in the sense of you're still covering your bills. Life goes on. You're not stressing. You're not struggling. As you know, with the furlough business, it's not your full wages and, you know, so I'm going to go into it. So what's going to happen with your job? You know yet? Do you know? I have no clue. Like, I can't, I can't even speak on it because I don't know. Um, mm. I just have to follow my gut. And I don't, I haven't, I haven't had words with my gut yet, like, completely. I will have words when I need to have words. And then I just, there's a special lady that lives in my gut and then I ask her, what do I need to do? And she will tell me. Beautiful, beautiful. Because your job is a job that you enjoy. You said that to me Yeah, before. I love my job. I, I've gone yeah. in there. I've um, The team, when I went in there, there was no team. Like every man for themselves in there. As I said, there's a team of, yeah. us, 16 of us, 18 of us actually. And um, it was so fragmented. People used to sit anywhere, anywho, anywhere. They didn't do anything as a team. And I've, I've gone in there and I've built up a team 
my boss was going through EA's like no one's business and mm. they were like oh my god they found someone that's stuck like what have you done to this guy you turned him around um so part of me I don't think I might leave I might just go part-time Fair enough. And so Amanda Bailey can't take it no more. The, I, no, the thing is, I, I'm at a point that I can make the decision that I could leave if I wanted to leave. I yeah, just don't yeah, feel yeah. ready. Like, you know, like it's like holding a child or when you're an adult and you're leaving the nest, you're flying the nest. I don't think they're ready for me to let go of their hand yet. So, plus loads of changes are happening. There's redundancies happening and stuff. And I just think me leaving now is a bit of a, not even a kick in the face, but I don't feel like it's the right time. I'm not sure if it's the right time for them or the right time for myself. So let me, there's no need to rush that because I can leave, you know, I can yeah. leave any time. So why rush? Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah. with what you said, quite rightly so, you know, you need to have that conversation with your inner self. You need to meditate on it. You need to know, feel what's right. When you come back to the UK, that yeah. in itself could just be like, actually this is what i'm gonna do yeah exactly and i think that's what that i'm waiting like, for as well and that in itself, huh? yeah that's what i'm waiting so for like i can have all these plans yeah. for my you know future uk self but i'm not there mm. i'm not there so i've got to wait until i'm back i've got to, um i yeah there's a lot i want to implement but remember i've now got to get with the program in the uk everyone's done you everyone's done covid in the uk i haven't so it's going to be new to me that's like it, you know it's going to be completely new to me well you'll be happy to know that a lot of people are living their best lives out here Grand. turning up every weekend Grand. you know what i'm saying so even though boris decided to wait 10 days before we started wearing face masks in the supermarkets and shops and stuff yeah, um, people are still going to supermarkets without face masks on. It's UK. Oh, wow, not, in the, in um, Jamaica, you're not allowed in. You can do that, but you can't. Well, go they in. can't control it here. They can't control it here. Who's going to stop them? Unless you've got a police officer in that store that's going to fine you if you're happy to pay the fine. Wow. No, you, yeah. just put it, you might just put it on now. Like, just for ease. It's a lot easier. Regardless if you think it's corona, no corona, whatever you think, like it's just easy, isn't it? But do you know what? Yeah, and it's protecting I yourself. Put one on for the first time on Friday, and um, it was so uncomfortable. Oh, yeah, was, but imagine it in Jamaica. Oh my god, it's stifling, stifling. I want to stifle. Yeah, man, I was just like, I can't, you know, like, I just felt like I can't breathe. Just I thought I felt like the heat was going up to my head. Yeah. I was like, am I killing myself here? What am I doing? Take this off. You know, they're really there. Like, mm -mm. But, guys, Amanda, because we have spoken, and the main main thing is, you know, to share what you do. You've done that. Mm -hmm. Share the journey of what you're doing. You've done that. My last question for you, because we want to wrap this up, because she say Amanda's got appointments and these things. Mm -hmm. You know why I take too much time? Um... <laughs> Um, to wrap this up, where, where I always ask people their beginning of their journey, like their present time, their present and the future. You know, do you have a vision of where you see yourself in the next? I'd say I'm gonna say five years because I do, in the next I ten do. years it could be like boom, but you know, five years comes around kind of quick, believe it or not. So yeah, it does, it does. So if we go back uh to the past i can't remember the girl that left the uk that sounds really weird and really far-fetched take it how you want to take it but it is the truth like because i'm just not that person anymore in mm -hmm. terms of the future i have plans yes i do like i have so many plans mentoring academy teaching people stuff just making great impact on my plans but i must confess i live day to day so me even making a plan for next week is huge. I live, mm -hmm. this, I live in the present moment. Um, like, even if I can say, even like, you know, us scheduling this interview, I'm like, yeah, just see what I'm like on the day. Because 
for me implementing plans is that's massive to me now and you know my life used to be off that my job is off that but now I'm like no I I wake up because if you think about it, I started this company so blindly and every day it's just me waking up saying all right let me do this let me you know I'm going to implement this today I'm going to do this today and that's now how I live my life and it's so much more rewarding as opposed to so you'll just go with the flow sure am. you're letting that you and just that's, earlier that's you said that inner the inner woman inside of you is mm-hmm. your guide and you, yeah. it's your guide you're letting yeah. her guide I you mean, your yeah. spirit guide, guide you baby yeah. that's beautiful mm-hmm. and i've got another question actually sorry time i know no go I for it have a pipe, man. um <laughs> What would you recommend for anyone else out there that's about to start their own business or that has just started their business and they might feel a bit of anxiety? Because you know what? Yeah, I had a bit, I was doing my work, my support is love work the other day. And just one day, it was weird. Anxiety took over me. To the point where I was like, you know what? Let me shut this laptop and, and go and come back again later. I don't call it anxiety because the feeling is the name that you give to it. So I'll be like, do you know what? This is excitement. I don't call it anxiety. I'm like, it's excitement. Like, and that means you're maybe you're downloading a message, like something is coming to you. Um, mm. I wouldn't necessarily call it anxiety no more. And um, if there's that feeling of that overwhelmness, think of your mm. why. How? Because when we get anxiety mm. and when we get overwhelmed, it's because we're trying to think of, oh, how are we going to do this today? But I don't know how I'm going to do it. Forget that. That will line up. Just remember your why. Do you remember why you're doing it? Mm. So how, yeah, like it has no, no other place to go. It has to come. So the message for me would just to be continue. Continue as you are because realistically, you do know what you're doing. Deep rootedly, you know what you're doing. Thank you. Beautiful girl. <laughs> I wish you the ultimate, ultimate no, thank best you for this in your future. I am here in your corner. You get me? Um, and I will be because, as I said, you are one of my number yeah. one inspir- inspirations. COVID inspiration. Not even, I will fully, like you said, be careful with what you say in it. So I'd say just. 2020 inspiration get me um yeah and guys been a lot of lessons for everyone so many lessons yeah and if you need a virtual assistant please holler at your girl so this is where i now say amanda please do give your socials your website uh social media contacts and all these things yeah, so you, you can contact me at Amanda Bailey Consultancy on Instagram. My um, website is www.amandabaileyva.co.uk or you can email me at amanda at amandabaileyva.co.uk. Thank you. <laughs> and Thanks, then Amy. I'm going to say don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. You get me? More interviews to come once a month. Make sure your notification bells is turned on because every time you've got inspiration like this, the pun of lawn. I'll be working my pack with you though. I'm going to come to the race with you. And... You get me? Amanda, I love you. Everybody, love you thank too. You thank you so much. Peace subscribe turn on your notification bell tell a friend to tell a friend share it like it and all of these things follow the links below and until next time peace and blessings to you